Hey guys, it's Erica and welcome back to my channel. It's currently 1120 at night and I just want to talk to you guys really quick, tell you guys what's been going on with me and I also wrote down three questions that I got in the comments that I wanted to answer for you guys. I told you guys that I was going to start answering your um, questions that you put in the comment section in my vlogs. So I picked three questions that I thought were pretty good and um, required a little bit more detail that would be good for a video and I'm going to answer those three questions at the end of this video. But yeah, um, I've actually been doing pretty good. I'm not in the best um, of spirits or the best of mood lately. I'm kind of going through kind of, I guess, a depression type of Thing kind of going on but I just realized the more that I read the Bible the more I listen to the right type of music and things like that the better that I feel and the more peace that I have and I've just been kind of working on that you guys know how that gets when you kind of have like a depressive mood you're just not feeling good about things and I'm um, just just not in the best mood and not really wanting to talk to anybody or talk to people period like I really only want to talk to my mom my dad and Kaden like I don't really want to talk to people I'm kind of just not really in the mood lately but I'm trying to kind of get myself um, in a better mindset so I wanted to film for you guys and yeah so um, if you're ever feeling like that because I know a lot of us go through that just like a depressive phase I guess you could call it or just it kind of overwhelms you or overcomes you I think the best thing that you can do is to pick up your Bible is to read God's Word is a lot of different things have just helped me to just remain um, give me more peace more clarity in my mind help me to put things in perspective and help me to kind of um, dig myself out of the grave before I get into it so I've been loving that um, I can get out before it really gets bad you know but yeah so little public service announcement right there but I'm gonna go ahead and answer those questions for you guys I don't want to be on for long like I told you I'm really not in the mood but I wanted to talk to you guys and I wanted to share that with you guys because I know a lot of times when I'm going through things a lot of you guys are going through things too so I think it's nice when I can share that with you guys and kind of relate with you guys sometimes so the first question is coming from Sabrina Lindman and she says do you ever get patients that ask you while you're doing the exam what you see and if so how do you usually handle it so I get that a lot almost every one of my patients ask me what do I see depending on the exam I might show them now of course if they had a miscarriage if things are looking bad that I'm looking at then my reply is I can't I'm not allowed to show you anything or tell you anything but your doctor will give you the results is what I'll tell them and I'm just like I'm not allowed that's not my job description I can't tell you anything but usually I'll say I'm not allowed to show you anything but your doctor will give you your results as soon as you get back to your room or within 30 minutes if they're in the ER or whatever and then if it's something like I'm looking at their kidney and their kidney looks normal, I'll show them the screen and say, well, this is your kidney or this is your liver, this is your gallbladder, and it just makes them feel more comfortable. And me showing them isn't really hurting anything because I'm showing them an organ that's healthy. So usually it's real quick and I'm like, well, here's your kidney. I'm just looking at your kidney and I'll turn the screen back or I'll just tell them what the exam is about. So if they're asking me, um, what do you see and it's a kidney exam I'm like oh I'm just looking at your kidneys and then I'll measure your bladder and then you'll be all done it's really nothing nothing to see or if they're really early in their pregnancy and they want to see something and I'm like you really can't see anything right now you're so early I wouldn't worry about seeing anything and like usually they're okay with that answer but hopefully that answered your question but usually I will tell them if it's something that um, I see on the screen that I don't want them to see I will tell them that I can't tell them um, if it's a DVT study um, I, what we like to do here is I'll tell them um, if I call your doctor then that's not good but if I let you go it's probably okay you know what I mean and you kind of give them a kind of a hint of what's going on but um, yeah hopefully that answered your question <laughs> okay so question number two is coming from Logan Harper and it says hey Erica I was wondering why you didn't like being a rad tech and specific reasons you didn't want to do it so I didn't enjoy being a rad tech first off because I knew that I wanted to be an ultrasound tech from the jump and I became a rad tech because I didn't know of any ultrasound programs in my area the only ultrasound programs that I knew of were not in my area at all so um, I wanted to go through rad tech and then I just figured because it was an imaging modality that somehow I would end up in ultrasound and it kind of worked that way um, I was at clinic one day and there was a girl who went to the school that I ended up going to and that's how I figured out that they had an ultrasound school but the basic reason that I didn't enjoy rad tech is because I before I even say this I don't want you guys to feel like I'm saying that rad techs aren't smart or anything like that because that's not what I'm saying but in my personal opinion I just felt like the job 
really didn't require much from you mentally and I wanted something that was a little bit more challenging. So as far as Rad Tech goes, you not, you're not a part of the diagnosing process. You basically, you take a picture of whatever they want you to take a picture of. As long as you have light covering everything, you can't mess up, you can't miss anything. I mean, you, you put everything in the image that the doctor needs in the image, then you're done. You know, the rest is to the radiologist and like that's pretty much it. And, uh, and it's a very, uh, it can be a very strenuous job too and you don't make as much as you make, bleh, you don't make as much as a rad tech as you do as an ultrasound tech, and you do more body work as a rad tech. You're literally running around the hospital doing portables. This is my, this is what I've seen. You're running around the hospital doing portables. You're doing all different types of things all throughout the night. Um, a lot of people around here um, get up, or not get up, because we're not asleep, but <laughs> at 4 a.m. and start their rounds of like portables and stuff. And yes, I have that too, but it's just not as strenuous. It's not as constant as rad tech is for less pay, more body work, and not really challenging your mind. If that doesn't offend anybody, <laughs> but I um, chose ultrasound because I felt like it. I'm part of the diagnosing process. If I don't mention what I see when I'm looking at it live, then things can be missed. So it's really important that I pay attention. It's really important that I find pathology if it's there, that I bring it up to the radiologist, that I bring my concerns to the radiologist, that when I write up things, the radiologist checks it over and pretty much agrees with me. So if I'm writing up that I see um, nothing and then they do a CT scan and the person had a tumor then I'm in big trouble and I guess the fear not the fear but like the challenge intrigues me I guess so overall <laughs> I enjoy the challenge of being a rad tech because I'm more involved in the diagnosing process and my job is very important to the diagnosis of the patient um, I enjoy it also because I get paid a little bit more and I enjoy it just because it's just it's just more challenging to me than the job of a rad tech and there's nothing wrong with being a rad tech like obviously rad techs are awesome and there's nothing wrong with being a rad tech but just for me it just wasn't enough for me okay so the last question is coming from carissa morgan and she says what is your exact field of sonography what are you registered in and what do you scan at work so that's a great question um what is your exact field of sonography i'm not quite sure what you mean by that um maybe general, we can call it general. <laughs> and what are you registered in? I'm registered in OBGYN sonography. And what do you scan at work? I scan a little bit of everything. I scan babies, I scan the carotid arteries in your neck, I scan your thyroid, I scan your kidneys, your liver, your gallbladder, your pancreas, your spleen, your pelvis, your testicles, your legs, arterial and venous. And I also scan soft tissue things, like if you have a cyst on your skin or you might have a mass or a lump somewhere, I'll scan that and see what's inside of it. If it's a liquid or if it's like an actual mass and there's like a hard lump inside of it, then I'll be able to do that. We also scan breasts. I'm not breast certified and I'm not good at scanning breasts, but I can. <laughs> so we scan breasts as well. And yeah, we do not scan the heart that is a totally kind of different modality and yes it involves ultrasound but they consider it like separate so you know the whole heart thing is separate and then you have like ultrasound <laughs> the things that i just talked about but yeah i scan all of those things at work so although i am an OBGYN registered sonographer i don't just sit around scanning babies all the time because i don't work at an OBGYN facility i work at a um, hospital that has inpatient outpatient ER, all those things. So I scan a little bit of everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously we're like best friends now because I'm giving you like haven't slept in years face and doesn't brush her hair hair. So whatever. But I, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If any of you guys have ever gone through a depression or just feel sad or whatever, let me know down in the comment section what you do to help you out. I read the Bible. I listen to gospel music. I try to pet myself up. I try to watch things that I love watching medical school videos of people that have bad grades or people who you know like success stories I love success stories I love things like that and I'll watch those types of things but what pulls you out of your depression what makes you feel better let me know down in the comment section down below because this is not something that just I go through this is something that so many people go through and we can all help each other so just comment down below and tell me what you do to help yourself get out of that hole and I'll talk to you guys very soon